Lend your soul to intuition Renaissance, the revolution Pick me up even if I fall Okay, we back at it again. Got some more reactions for y'all. If I can get my mic to, uh, to, to, to stand up. Hold on one second. All right, today we got Casual Geographic. Animal facts that he got wrong. Because I didn't get them wrong. I Google everything. So I wouldn't get anything wrong. All right, the babies are one of the most dangerous animals in the world, so I built this cage to keep them secure so there's no possible... Oh, my God. Hi. Oh, you're such a big boy. Hi, you're so cute. What's your name? What's your name? Okay. Oh, hi. Vino Moose. Well, hi, Vino Moose. I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my job. I'm just playing, I'm playing. But, but can you imagine? Nah, but this is gonna be an accountability video. And honestly, it's all because of one comment I got on TikTok. Basically someone commented on one of my videos disagreeing with me and someone replied to that comment with something like, yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna believe the guy with 16 million followers. Yeah, that, that didn't sit right with me. Just cause I have more followers than sheep in Scotland doesn't mean my word's law. Mistakes happen. That's why keyboards have backspace and DoorDash has birth control. So that's what this video is, animal facts that I've gotten wrong. Or at the very least didn't get 100%. And starting off is the fact that I don't really even know how I believed in the first place. I've already corrected this, but if you've been following me long enough, you've definitely heard me say that lions have a bite force of 650 pounds per square inch. Almost half as strong as their brolic biracial tangerine colored cousins. Except more recent studies puts the lion's jaw work at closer to a thousand pounds. So what did an afro cat do for us to lie on them so bad? <laughs> Apparently it all goes back to a 2005 video from National Geographic where they- People always playing with animals. And when they when they when they buck at you, then you get scared. Like didn't you didn't you expect that? What are you sitting that close to a lion for? Unless you raised them from when they was little, from from baby. I mean, since birth. Unless you unless you watched their mother give birth and you held them and and, and fed them with a bottle. Why would you be sitting that close to a lion? It's not friendly. Tested a lion's bite force, except they got it from a subadult male lion that couldn't have seen more than two or three trips around the sun. That's like saying the average man's five feet tall because he took a tape measure to a bunch of seventh graders. Also, the number they got was 691, so Mufasa knows why it got nerfed to 650. We now believe that the Bane of Buffalo has a bite force more in the neighborhood of four figures. Still just under carnivores like tigers and hyenas, but not by the landslide we originally thought. So apparently I owe lions in Africa and Detroit an apology. I was not familiar with their game. This video was recorded before the Buccaneers game, and I shall adjust my reaction accordingly. The 690 number spawned from an old show I known been as- football. It's it's um it's a little it's a little it's 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 a bit much for me. I'm I'm gonna watch the Super Bowl, and I'm gonna watch the NBA Finals. But I haven't been watching men's sports like that. I've been watching. I've been doing this college, women's college basketball thing, and it's good. Uh, LSU just lost to South Carolina State. Nah, South Carolina University. I, I don't know. I think it's just South Carolina. But yeah, they they was up. For like three quarters. And then fourth quarter they lost. Ugh. Angel Reese was battling with uh Cordoso. Cordosa? Cordoso. And and she that's a big girl. Cordoso like six seven. And Angel like six four. And and six seven and big Cordoso six seven and and, and thick. <laughs> and and Angel she she wasn't having that. That post up game, Angel Angel couldn't couldn't post her up. It was crazy, but uh, but yeah, they was hitting threes and stuff. But yeah, it was a good game. 
Dangerous Encounters with Brady Barr. And we're gonna learn that TV shows aren't the best source for the most accurate information. Who would have guessed? Especially when it's from a time where Steve Harvey had hair and not hopes. Another fact I've said is that tigers are so strong that they can remain standing even after being turned into a statistic. Now, tigers are built like Greek sculptures modeled by furries. Blood from Zootopia proved that, but enough to stand on business even after they're physically finished? Well, if they do, it's probably more of a reflection on their stability than just raw strength. It also could be a freak accident that got reported as a fact. There was a guy that got his will activated while reaching for something in his kitchen and his friend legit found him that way. And there is at least one animal that does something similar. Since sloths have reverse grip, the Moss Motel of the Jungle can be found hanging on a branch even after they've already been emancipated from the population. But can the cornflakes kitty? Uh, maybe? But it's pretty unsubstantiated so I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. Along with another fact I've spent most of my childhood believing, and I know for a fact I've said this at least once, that venomous baby snakes are more dangerous than the adults. The idea here is that snakes can consciously control how much venom they release, or if they release venom at all, but baby snakes with less experience, they empty the whole clip every time. Now the first part is true, snake venom is physically expensive to make, so a lot of snakes will compromise with drive bites to get the message across without spending the cost. It's like a blank shot from a gun with vibranium bullets, and the chances of getting a drive bite vary on the snake. The eastern brown snake delivers delivers diet bites an estimated 80% of the time. Something like a Taipan chooses mercy only 5%. Snakes can also actively control how much venom actually comes out by contracting certain muscles. It's why only one in 500 snake bites in the- I think those are cobras that can spit, spitting cobras? I think that's the thing. Yeah, that's crazy that, uh, I mean, how does it come out of your teeth? Or maybe it's glands that, that like can, like, you, you know what a gleek is? When, when your tongue does that thing where it shoots out water? Maybe that's how they, they can control a gland that spits out venom. And like, it's, it's corrosive to the skin. Once it hits the skin, it doesn't have to be injected into the bloodstream through, through fangs. That's ridiculous. I guess you gotta, you gotta evolve some type of way to, to, to get food when you don't have no arms or legs. <laughs> Poor snakes. In the US result in a census layoff. But does that mean baby snakes are worse? Well, no. Smaller, unseasoned snakes carry less venom, and science says you're more likely to get kicked off the mortal coil if an adult bites you. So my guess is that the myth came from an old wives' tale to keep kids from f***ing around and finding out with an immature fallen dread of Medusa. And I know for a fact I only got that from an old show on Animal Planet, and you, you probably know which show that is. It's the same show I also got this. For a minute, it was believed Komodo dragons catch bodies by biting their prey once and then waiting for them to retire to bacterial infection. But really, the sooner a Komodo can drag you off the mortal plane, the better, since that just means less dragons to share with. Remember that Komodos are leather bloodhounds that track down death faster than the Reaper. Also, they might not be fast, they're much, much faster than you think. But this whole time, this Jurassic Park understudy actually kills with venom with the helping of anticoagulants to keep you bleeding. That way, even if you escape, the homicidal steroid gecko can always hunt you down. We used to think it was blood poisoning, but apparently the bacteria in their mouths isn't really that special from any other carnivore. In fact, if you mouth swab the dragon, you'd actually find less bacteria than you would in something like a captive lion or a bipolar looney tune. And after looking- okay, so I thought, yeah, I googled that before, like, like a while ago. And, well not Google, but I, I, I was watching some Komodo dragon documentary and yeah, they said that the, it's the bacteria in their mouth that poisons when they bite. I didn't know they actually had venom. That's okay. Looking further, I can tell you the misunderstanding definitely came from an injured buffalo's first instinct to run into water. And a buffalo taking an open flesh wound into dirty, stagnant toilet water is more of an indictment on the bush cow's hygiene than the lizard's. And speaking of water being your downfall, I've talked about animals that can't swim, and I once said that guinea pigs were on the list. Turns out I was wrong, and I can't even blame Animal Planet this time. Guinea pigs can swim, and in some cases can do it for hours. The catch is that they don't care for it very much. Most sources say guinea pigs get stressed in deep water, and while they can swim, their ancient ancestors avoided it to avoid getting cancelled by predators, so nothing about it's a good time for them. In other words, I'm a f***ing guinea pig. Now this isn't something I got wrong, but I still want to explain it a little more. So I mentioned how these finches inspired Darwin's theory because, well... Long story short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. Now technically, that's not wrong, but I feel like I made it sound like their beaks changed just because the birds needed them to. 
What actually happened was different finches were found on different parts of the islands, and depending on where they were, certain finches had an advantage. That advantage could have been something like a particular beak shape, and that advantage was more likely to get passed down more often. Eventually, certain traits would get selected for naturally, through purpose, not perfection. That's natural selection. And depending on the best food source, the finches most suited to feed and breed outcompeted the others. It's kind of like how giraffe necks didn't just get longer, it was more like longer necks outperformed shorter necks, and history just wasn't kind of the vertically deficient. <laughs> Actually, no, latest studies say the long neck actually came from their mating preference and the fact that giraffes like to run fades using their heads. So why the long neck? Apparently, FNS. To flex and sex. Apparently the only leave they were worried about is maternity. And speaking of eating, there's another animal whose meal plan I was completely wrong about. Opossums are the rat-tailed relic Australia left behind. They're also free pest control since one pouch packing possum can terminate 5,000 ticks in a season. Except they don't. We, and well, I, got that wrong. The number comes from an experiment where they introduced 100 ticks to different animals like mice, squirrels, and yeah, opossums, and counted how many ticks had fed and fallen off. According to the study, the opossum cage had way less ticks than all the others, so the assumption was that any tick that wasn't found at the bottom of the cage had likely been eaten. So they took the number of ticks left in the cage, along with the population of ticks found in wild opossums, to come to the conclusion that opossums must put away 5,000 ticks a season, at least. Yeah, not the most solid logic, and later studies examining their stomachs and feces found that the shit literally didn't add up. Not only does Coma Kitty not pass tense ticks by the thousands, ticks aren't even a preferred part of their diet. There are a lot of weird things about this faint weasel, like how their body temperature is so low that rabies gets possums more than possums get rabies, or that their nipples straight up look like a devil worshipping cult with 12 milk faucets circling one. But the whole thing about them being tick vacuums, that kind of falls on its face. But you want to know what doesn't fall on its face? Cats. They always land on their feet and can survive free falling from a building. So much that cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and not flatlining on impact. At least that's what I said. But in the original study from 1987, out of the 132 cats that went to the vet after touching pavement from a window, 90% survived. Wait, 90% of the cats that went to the vet. Someone in the comments pointed out that this was a case of survivorship bias said, Fair, you wouldn't take a dead cat to the vet. And out of the 90% that didn't instantly become a chalk outline, 90% of them had some form of thoracic trauma. 37% needed emergency surgery to renew their life subscription. 30% needed non-emergency treatment, and only a third tanked an accelerated sidewalk smack and walked away needing nothing. Also, 17 years later in 2004, another study showed that flights from the 7th floor and up actually caused worse injuries than lower drops, which cancels out the other thing I said about shorter drops doing more damage. So I think the real answer here is unless you're Shane Dawson, treat your cats the same way you treat your kids and don't let either go out the window. Now yeah, for this next fact, like, I'm gonna be honest. That one didn't make any sense anyway. A higher drop creates more damage, obviously. If it wasn't for one comment, I'd probably spend the rest of my life getting it wrong. And it's that REM is the deepest stage of sleep, and that insomniacs dream about being reincarnated as a platypus since nature's casserole gets more REM than any other animal. I was always taught that your eyes twitching out like high synapse meant deep sleep. It's actually the third stage of NREM that's the deepest. It's called N3, and it's the closest you'll get to cosplaying as a corpse while having a pulse since it's the hardest stage to wake up from. It's also the stage where your body repairs tissues, builds bones, restores muscles, and strengthens the immune system. Basically, you know how your phone will update at the gooch of dawn as long as it's connected to an outlet? That's the N3 stage of sleep. It's also when you're most likely to precipitate your sheets or traumatize your family since that's when bedwetting and sleepwalking occurs. It only lasts about 20 to 30 minutes each stage, and if you're lucky, you'll get about an hour and a half of N3 a night. But it's N3 that's the deepest stage, not REM. But since REM is the dream stage, the platypus still has more real estate in DreamWorks than Shrek. Now this next fact comes from deep in my TikTok days, back when I wasn't so afraid of guidelines. That blue whales release 400 gallons worth of baby batter, with only 10% of that getting where it needs to go. And for the measurement impaired like myself, 400 gallons is like 10 bathtubs of whale maker. Except 400 is more of a reach than a whale's piece. It's actually like 5 gallons per session, and again, that's about one of these. Still, most of the liquid daycare ends up getting offloaded back into the ocean. Makes you wonder why it's so salty. That's a joke by the way, it's sea foam, they're not actually playing in pre-whale. Speaking of tainted water, this next thing isn't something I got wrong or even said, but something I showed. I saw this video of a manatee getting an assist from some guy and honestly didn't think much of it. Apparently the law doesn't agree because not only is this illegal, 
It's hella illegal. You don't want to give manatees water for the same reason you don't feed wild animals. Eventually, the water blimp could lose its fear of humans and boats and end up getting turned into a speed bump. The Florida Manatee Act of 78 makes it illegal to do anything to a manatee, mean, obscene, and anything in between. And if you're offering Dasani, they're honestly better off dead. As dead as a dog from this video. Or maybe not. So you probably remember this story I told of a polar bear petting a dog before turning it into Nemo's mom. But it wasn't actually the same dog that got turned into bear bait the way I said. What happened was this video went viral. So viral that the Canada CBC News got a hold of it. So much that they basically aired the guy out and said that officials had to relocate three polar bears from the same property a week before after one of the bears erased one of the dogs. Apparently owner Brian Ledoon had been feeding the ice bears along with his pack of Eskimo dogs and according to him, the one night he didn't feed the glacier goons was the night one of the dogs went on a play date with Old Yeller. It was actually before this video and it wasn't this dog or bear. I, I think the timeline's still not 100% clear. Also, the Ladoon guy passed away in 2018, so I guess we'll never really know for sure. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay to not know. Science is constantly learning, unlearning, and relearning things. Matter of fact, a lot of the things in this video at one point were seen as 100% fact. I guess the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter how many followers I get, I'm not gonna get everything right. I'm just not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. Cause like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, One of the great challenges in this world is knowing enough about a subject to think you're right, but not enough about the subject to know you're wrong. What is blood waffling about? Alright, that's gonna do it. Drink water, hug your parents, don't hug a manatee. Humanity's f them enough. Let's make this a good year and I'ma see y'all in the next one. later folder we still doing these reactions it's not gonna stop and I got I got music I got gameplays I got streaming we, we doing everything we, we doing a look I don't have skits we, maybe maybe one day but yeah all right so that was animal flat facts I got wrong by casual geographic um yeah the we we at we at 91 subscribers right now the subscriber count is 91 doing pretty well it could be better but these i mean i'm only doing reaction videos and but but i got more stuff coming in trust me so watch it you right there you watching this watch everything else um so yeah, the goal is a thousand. So if you still, if you made it this far, and you still watching. Thank you. I love you. Subscribe. Leave a like. Comment. Uh, whether you thought baby snakes let out more venom like a like a superhero who's just getting his powers and he can't control them. Comment about that. All right, man. See y'all later. Peace. Lend your soul to intuition Renaissance, the revolution Pick me up even if I